All right, this is my vlog for the 28th of August, 2024. I'm Scott. So we started this morning again pretty early, just like yesterday. We had to hop up and get moving because we need to be to the airport. On the early side, we have a 8.45-ish flight from Costa Rica, where we are in San Jose, over to uh, Panama City, Panama. Uh, that's a really short flight. It's actually under an hour in airtime, uh, but you gotta get to the airport early. This is an international flight and we're flying Copa, which we haven't done before. So we don't know if there's gonna be anything there. And uh, we're not Panamanian or Costa Rican. So there's always the possibility of things taking a little bit longer as a third party national uh, flying to the airport. So got up early, uh, zipped out of the Hampton, took the shuttle, walked down the shuttle, was just about to go. That's the second time. So we just jumped on the shuttle. We're right over. So about 5.45 we left, so a little bit before 6, got to the airport. We were able to check in, no problems there. There was, The machines, of course, didn't work for us, uh, as they never do. I can't remember the last time. The machine actually let me check in for a flight. They always tell you to do it. You spend a whole bunch of time, and then they have to do it manually anyway. Uh, but we um, did that. We just took carry-ons. We don't have any uh, checked luggage on this flight. Um, went fine, went through security, no problems. Had a little bit of time to wait in San Jose, uh, but not, not a ton, really. Uh, it was pretty good. Got right on our flight uh, down to Panama got into Panama City, had a, a pretty short layover, about 90 minutes, we think, uh, between, but it was only an hour in the air, so it's like, it was like nothing. They even gave us a snack. I can't believe they bothered on such a short flight. Uh, got into Panama City, got to our gate. You don't have to go through security or anything uh, if you're transiting um, without uh, entering the city in any way. So that's nice and good to know. You can do a really fast transfer in Panama City. You don't need some places like Lima. You need a long layover to be able to handle all the the stuff you have to do as you go through the airport, even just tr transferring flights. But Panama City just they treat it like a domestic flight as long as you're not leaving the security zone. So it's super comfortable, fast, and easy. That works really well. Uh, if you are, uh, so we got delayed uh, by about an hour. So we had a little bit of time to kill in Panama. So we grabbed a sandwich. Um, Panama, like Costa Rica, quite expensive in the airport. Not quite as bad as San Jose, but in the general ballpark. Uh, so not a place you want to be planning to eat or anything if you can, if you can avoid it. But it's a comfortable airport, it's nice to use. Flying Copa there, definitely something I would do again, no, no problems at all. Uh, we were off to uh, Buenos Aires at a good time. I can't remember exactly what time we took off, but like probably close to noonish. And uh, we were on our way. The actual flight to South America is only around about <laughs> seven hours of air time, which looks like 10 hours because you have to transfer many time zones. We've already done one time zone from Nicaragua and Costa Rica are one time. Uh, Panama is one hour east of that. And then going to Buenos Aires is two more hours. So it's a total of three hours difference than what we're used to. Uh, so that's a little bit of a shock. It's, it's a pretty, pretty hefty distance. It's like going from California to New York. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, so the flight went pretty well. That's definitely a long flight. I don't have any entertainment. They have power in the seats, but not for my kind of connections. Uh, but I really, a lot of times I don't want to watch anything anyway. I just like napping and getting a chance to, to decompress. So mostly that's what I did the whole flight. Uh, the person, we had um, aisle and window seats, but there's a whiny person in the window seat and or in the middle. And honestly, I don't care where I sit. It doesn't bother me at all. So I just moved to the middle. One thing that was really interesting, as we were flying over Bolivia, the guy next to me opened, well, first we were flying over Southern Colombia. He opened the window and there was probably had, it was already open and we could see the Amazon in Southern Colombia or one of the feeders. It was really cool because I've never seen it. So even though I've been in the area, I've never flown over it with visibility. Uh, then hours later, we're flying over uh, southern Bolivia, and suddenly he opened his window after we been, everybody had been asleep for a long time. And for that one moment, crystal clear was Cochabamba. I just looked out the window and immediately recognized Co Cochabamba. I could see Ozzy's block and like where his house is. I could like make out everything in the city. I could see the street where I stayed when I was there last year. Like it was like, Wow, it was just like looking at a map from the sky. It was so clear, it was really cool. Um, I had a really good time looking at the, the flyover of the Pampas in northern Argentina. So interesting the way that the cities are all laid out in grids. Like really, like obviously it's, it's like the Midwest, completely flat. They're able to plan cities. 
but seeing it from the sky was really interesting and seeing how much population is up there is really something because it's like 41 million people live in the pampas so it's a it's a unbelievable area of population uh in south america but it's an area you don't really think about when you look at it on a map clearly there's a lot of cities out there there's a lot of stuff going on but to stop and really think about like there's actually a huge population living out in this area that no one knows really interesting and that's kind of the heart of argentina there's more people out there than there is in buenos aires but we only think of buenos aires uh, so that was that was really cool to get to see we got into buenos aires about 10 o'clock customs was so easy uh and then we got to the hotel we just took a shuttle from the airport probably paid way too much but took a shuttle from the airport um i would suggest an uber in the future uh they took us to our hotel we're staying at the curio collection by hilton right in san telmo near the poor good location nice hotel it was super cheap it was like 100 bucks everything else is like 300 so that was really good uh we got in at midnight though everything was closed they're like yeah the place on the corner will still have food so we just dropped our stuff went to the corner luckily they were just about to close uh got some veggie burgers and fries got a beer uh all very good uh, some live music that was really good like lounge music it was so different than we get in nicaragua it was such a nice change and so what i imagine as buenos aires so it, that was just absolutely perfect as a first night watched the show ate our dinner and then went to bed tomorrow we'll be hanging out it's our one day before the wedding so we're just going to be chilling i'm going to do some walking and uh, we're going to move to our apartment tomorrow